Megan Day, writing over at Jacobin Magazine, is quoting from a new study that was published in Psychology, Psychological Bulletin, written by Thomas, or the study was done by Thomas Cur Curran and Andrew Hill. And what this study found, this is uh, absolutely fascinating. This is, again, Psychological Bulletin was the publication. They're looking at, at behavioral and psychological changes in the American population. And these changes are most pronounced among people, you know, under 50, basically, and, and you know, down into the, into the millennials uh, in particular. But, but it, it stretches right across the United States. And what they're finding is that perfectionism is on the rise. Now, what is perfectionism? Uh, perfectionism comes in three forms. There's self-oriented perfectionism, I want to be perfect. There's other-oriented perfectionism. I want my wife, my husband, my employee, my employer, my neighbor, my friend to be perfect. And then there's socially prescribed perfectionism, which is where the entire culture starts basically harassing us all to be perfect. They define this social self-oriented perfectionism. They say all three types are on the rise. And this is a bad thing. This is causing an increase in suicides, an increase in anxiety, an increase in all kinds of problems. Um, in fact, they, they write, uh, unsurprisingly, societies governed by these values make people very judgmental and very anxious about being judged. It describes the feeling of paranoia and anxiety engendered by the persistent sensation that everyone is waiting for you to make a mistake so they can write you off forever. This hyper-perception of others' impossible expectations, writes Megan Day, causes social alienation, neurotic self-examination, feelings of shame and unworthiness, and a sense of self overwhelmed by pathological worry and a fear of negative social evaluation characterized by a focus on deficiencies, and sensitive to criticism and failure. Do you find yourself criticizing yourself as you go through the day? Oh, he shouldn't have said that. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that. That's what we're talking about here. And people born in the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada after 1989, these are you know, younger people, scored much higher than previous generations for all three kinds of perfectionism. And that scores increased linearly over time. The socially prescribed perfectionism has doubled, 100% increase. Young people's feeling of, uh, in other words, young people's feeling of being judged harshly by their peers and the broader culture is intensifying with every passing year. So why would this be happening? Well, it turns out that this is the result of neoliberalism, which you could also call Reaganism or Thatcherism. Both the United States and the United Kingdom have been badly infected by this. And Germany, to some extent, this is, the, this is part of the battle that's going on right now in the conservative base in Germany. The, the, the German conservatives are neoliberals, and it's just, you know, but that's a whole other conversation. So what they, you know, what they write about is neoliberal ideology. You know, what is neoliberalism? Neoliberalism is the belief that markets, you know, the, the, the looking at markets and, and noting, as, as Milton Friedman pointed out years and years ago, Millions of decisions are made every second in marketplaces. And therefore, Friedman suggested, marketplaces are perfect because they're like crowdsourced. Well, it's BS because marketplaces are actually created by both government and companies and manipulated by both government and companies. But nonetheless, uh, neoliberalism is the ideology that what works for markets should work for politics and should work in, in our social lives. So. Uh, as Megan Day writes in, in Jacobin, uh, neoliberal ideology reveres competition, discourages cooperation. See, prior to Reagan, we had a we society from, from the New Deal in 1933 all the way up to 1981. It was a we society. We were strengthening Social Security. We were strengthening Medicare and Medicaid. We were building you know, free college education all over the country. Um, we, we were all in this together. Post Reagan, it's the me society, me, 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 me. And it's the atomizing, breaking up, shattering society and, and the standards of society of the we society, of the I'm my brother's keeper, as one of our callers talked about yesterday. That's all, that's, you know, neoliberalism destroys that. Reaganism and Thatcherism destroys that. 
So back to the back to the article. Neoliberal ideology reveres competition, discourages cooperation, promotes ambition, and ties personal worth to professional achievement. You're only as good as how much money you make or how high you climb in the status uh, hierarchy in your workplace. Unsurprisingly, societies governed by these values make people very judgmental and very anxious about being judged. And I, you know, I think that the judgmentalism of, of Donald Trump is a great example of this. And the, the, the solution, by the way, to this, they say young people today are less interested in engaging in group activities for fun. Instead, they're putting all their efforts into achievement. The respect for peers is conditional on how good they are. Uh, this has produced an epidemic of serious mental illness. Perfectionism is highly correlated with anxiety, eating disorders, dis depression, and even suicidal thoughts. So how do we fix this? We repudiate neoliberalism. We say Reaganism was a huge mistake. The, this greed is good mentality, this, this me, 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 let's just reverse that and go back to building a we society. Of course, that's going to require getting the billionaires and their money out of politics.